Hi there, welcome back. In case you're new, my name is Steve. I'm building a racing game with Unity, and this is my devlog series. So in this video, I'm going to do a performance test and just walk you through some of the changes I've made over the last couple days. What I've been working on was AI vehicles, just trying to make them look cool, giving them headlights and taillights. They are currently just using some standard Unity primitives. I don't know that I want to use these vehicle models, but they're pretty optimized, but I, I think they also need some work. The wheels are not really rounded, which makes them look weird sometimes. And the there's some there's there's a lot of areas of the cars that are not smooth, but again, these are just background traffic vehicles. I I don't suspect that the player will be really inspecting these and being like, I, I can't actually see too much of the issues I'm able to see in the editor. Um, but like the wheel hub areas, those are not really a hundred percent circular. Um, it, you could tell there, there's some straight edges on them, but as I'm driving around, I, I don't really notice that. So that may not be an issue and these vehicles might be okay. Um, so what I want to do is actually take all of these primitives and probably combine them with the vehicle mesh in some way. They're, they're each using a standard shader and I just have the emission turned up. So that's what gives that red glow effect or for the headlights, it gives that white glow effect. And if I were to look in my rear camera, you could you could actually see what the scene looks like without any post-processing. Um, this camera needs to be updated. Basically, it, what I should be doing is just moving the main camera to that position. That way I don't need two cameras. And that, that would just fix that. So that's what I've been working on with the AI. Um, the, the cars also have two spotlights on them. So with deferred rendering, you're able to use a lot more lights, which is really going to come in handy when I'm building this open world. But right now I think the way that I'm doing it is just not efficient. And also I'm not going to have this many cars around the player at any given time. There might only be about 20, but but I do know that having these 150 cars in the scene is basically what's what's giving me a performance hit right now. So I'll jump into the race scene in a, in a few minutes. In that scene, we're running at about 115 frames a second, and that only has the one AI vehicle, the racer. Another thing that you might notice is new is I have some grass and some trees. What I'm doing here is I'm using Vegetation Studio Pro. And notice how there's not grass and trees everywhere. So the thing about Vegetation Studio Pro is it's really cool because it uses the C-sharp job system and burst compiler for all of the rendering. Now, if I go to my rear facing camera, you'll notice you don't see any vegetation. So all of the vegetation that's spawning is basically spawning as an instance to whatever cameras are assigned to the Vegetation Studio Pro Manager. And that's pretty sweet. Um, and since it's using C Sharp jobs and burst, it's highly optimized and I'm getting some, some awesome occlusion culling and I'm able to have nice thick grass. I could probably put a bunch more trees in here and and it won't really result in too much of a performance hit. Now the downside of it is so Vegetation Studio Pro is a procedural generation system. You don't paint like you do with Unity Terrain, which is kind of tedious. So in this world that I'm building, it's actually going to take me a long time to set up all of this vegetation because I, I need to create mask areas, which is what you're seeing here. The vegetation that, that has been laid out is basically in a biome mask and I could adjust that mask, but I have to adjust it manually. 
if I just let the system spawn wherever it wants and then try to mask it out later, I, basically it's going to spawn grass and trees all through my roads inside of the buildings. And I'm going to have to create even more masks to mask out the stuff that I don't want. So I think if I, if I had any gripe with vegetation studio pro, it would be that it doesn't detect the mesh and automatically create a mask area for you. You have to do that yourself. And I was reading through the forum and there were some other users that basically expressed the same thing. They might've been building something with easy roads, for example, and, and all of the vegetation is spawning through easy roads. And it, it's just something that I'll have to deal with. It's a little frustrating that such a powerful tool falls short in that area of mass procedural generation for a large scene like this, because it's just going to want to spawn like, like this whole street would be covered with grass and trees. And I would have to mask out every single street manually. And it, that's just frustrating. So the alternative is I manually place the vegetation where I want, which is why I only have a little bit of vegetation in this edge area so far. And just setting up this edge area took me a little bit of time because you have to manually place points and you're basically creating a polygonal shape that you want your vegetation to spawn in. So, so for all of the vegetation I want, I need to, I basically need to set it up manually and it would be so much easier if I could just paint like a unity terrain. And I, I think that's the only frustration I have with this asset. Um, other than that, it, it is cool. I, I don't think it's a hundred percent awesome because it's a procedural system and, and you do have to go ahead and, and do a lot of that work yourself. Um, and I don't think the publisher is ever going to fix that issue. Maybe he will, but from what I've read in the forum, he, he sounded disinterested in it and he's basically telling people to just use masks. But with the large open world, we can see how big of a world that I, I want to build it's, it's actually a, a labor intensive job. Um, I don't know if I'm going to build my game that big, but anyway, it's just something to consider if you're thinking about using vegetation studio pro for a very large scene, the performance benefits are amazing, but there's a lot of manual work that you're going to need to do to mask out these areas or, or just define what you need to define. Um, I, it would be super awesome if it just automatically set those masks up for you when, and said, Oh, go ahead and adjust the masks that we, we detected all of this geometry and there's an algorithm in here that, that, that checks that. But anyway, that's just me complaining about an asset because it's <laughs> cause I have to do some work, but anyway, um, so let's go ahead and just go into a scene. So we could see the driving around the scene. None of those AI cars are turned off right now. And that's why I'm running at 80 frames per second, but I can't see some of them. So if, if I get closer, then I drop to 50. Um, let me load into this race scene. And we'll see a nice frame rate increase. And that's because there's no AI cars in the scene. So... We're at 115, 116, and we could see that the vegetation up here is, is running. Um, so vegetation is not causing any performance impact at all, basically, which is awesome. So I could probably put more trees in here and just make it thicker vegetation, which is definitely something that I want to do. I don't have Enviro in here either for the sky. Um, so that's also giving a performance hit. I'm going to have to play with all of this stuff a little bit. I, I'm not even racing. I'm in a race and I'm not racing, but that will pretty much catch you up on where I am, what I'm working with. And yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, my, my plan is to, 
build the world piece by piece and set up vegetation as I go, since it's a manual process. Um, that being said, I think I'm going to work on AI some more, just making those, trying to get those cars more optimized and doing some culling. Eventually I'm going to have to set up a pooling system to make those cars spawn around where the player's location is and just shuffle them around more. I think that'll be something that, that needs to be done at some point. Well, until the next video, thanks for checking this out. Um, see you. See you then.